Hey, welcome back to the channel. So you probably know by now that I love finding uses for older computers and especially older Macs. Some of those devices are fantastic, both the desktop and the laptop devices, but they're hampered by the support from Apple. So they might stop getting you know, upgrades to the latest version of the operating system, or even worse, they may stop getting security patches. Now this is gonna get worse and worse for the Intel Macs as they go further and further down the road with the Apple Silicon. So how do we revitalize these computers? So one of those ways is to install the latest version of Mac OS on these older unsupported Macs using something like Open Core Legacy Boot Patcher. I've shown you how to do that in the past and it works well, but there's usually some performance issues and sometimes some hardware recognition issues or even hardware performance issues. Uh, so that's not always the best choice. One fantastic way to completely revitalize your Mac is to load Linux on it. Now there are multiple distributions of Linux that use different cores, different architectures, and I'm not gonna go into details on that or details on how to install these on your Mac. I have a Linux channel. I'll put a link down in the description and up in the corner. I'll be doing install tutorials on there and I have more details on Linux specific topics. So check that out if you want. What I am gonna talk about is two different distributions. One is Endeavor OS and one is Fedora 36. Those are currently my two favorite distributions. And we're gonna check them out on the 2014 Mac Mini and a uh, 2012 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now, although I'm not gonna do the tutorial in this video, to get these installed for pretty much any distribution is super easy. You go out to the site that provides that distribution, you get the ISO file, you use something like Etcher to burn that onto a USB thumb drive, and you can do that from Linux, Windows, or Mac OS. Uh, once that's burned on there, you just boot your computer with that USB in there and hold down the option key. It'll give you the option to boot into the installer, and then, from there, it's just like installing it on any other computer. Now, once you get the distribution installed, for the most part, everything works very, very well on both the MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini. Uh, the difference between Fedora and Endeavor OS is Endeavor OS recognizes all of the hardware out of the box, but that distribution is geared for somebody that has a little bit of experience with Linux. So you'll have more choices during the installation that may uh, confuse a new user. And then when you get to the desktop, it doesn't have a lot of software pre-installed. Now it does have a kind of an app store, uh, software center kind of thing, where you can go out and get uh, LibreOffice for your office suite, you can get video editors, you can get you know whatever software you want, but it doesn't come with that pre-installed. So if you're not used to Linux, that might be a little bit confusing. Fedora, on the other hand, comes with a office suite and like the core applications that you would expect to be on an installation to get you going. It also has an app store where you can install all kinds of different apps. Now the deal with Fedora is that it will not recognize the Wi-Fi card out of the box when you install it. So you'll have to have your computer hook to an ethernet jack or use a USB Wi-Fi adapter that is compatible with Linux. But once you get that set up, you can install the drivers. And uh, once you get the drivers installed, Fedora works amazingly well. Fedora is much more new user friendly, I would say, because like I said, it has that, some of that software installed, has everything you need to get going. And um, it uses the GNOME environment, which is very uh, user friendly and intuitive. Now there's other distributions that work well on uh, older Macs, you know, Ubuntu, Linux Mint, those work great. But my two favorites are Endeavor OS and Fedora. That's why I focused on those uh, for this video. Now I can do testing on other distributions and I can do specific testing on software. If you want, just let me know down in the comment section. Now talking about software, there is a ton of software available for just about everything. There's free software, there's paid software, there's a version of DaVinci Resolve, the free version and the studio is available on Linux. That's what I use for all my video editing on both Mac and Windows. It's also available on Linux, but that's just an example. There's free video editors as well. There's Office Suites. Uh, Blender for 3D work, there's audio, DAWs, there's all kinds of software that you could want is available in Linux. Now you may not be able to find the exact commercial software that you're looking for, but you will be able to find something to get your work done. 
Now the upside to running Linux on your older Mac is, like I said, it completely revitalizes your computer. Most distributions run really, really well on these older Macs. You get recent uh, OS updates, you get recent security updates. Linux doesn't care what hardware it's running on, as long as you can install it, you'll continue to get those updates. The downside, if you can really consider it that, is you'll have to learn a new operating system. There are a lot of things that are very similar to either Windows or Mac OS, but it's a different operating system, so there's gonna be some differences that you'll have to learn. Now, you'll learn them very quickly. The developers have worked very, very hard to make most Linux distributions very user-friendly, and anytime you run into a problem, there's a great community. You can find a forum, you can find a subreddit, or you can just do a Google search and nine times out of 10, you'll very, very quickly find a solution to whatever problem you're having. So there you go. Another option for making your Mac new again. I would definitely recommend trying this. It doesn't cost you anything. If you don't like it, you just install over it and install Mac OS again or you know, Windows or use the Open Core Legacy Boot Patcher and install the newest version of Mac OS, whatever you want to do. But I would give Linux a try. It doesn't take much of your time. It's absolutely free. You don't have to pay anything for the operating system and it works fantastically well. I have it on both that 2014 Mac Mini and the 2012 MacBook Pro and I'm gonna leave it on there. For me, it works much better than Mac OS on those two machines. And I've been using Linux for years, so I, you know, have a bunch of software in Linux that I use regularly. Honestly, some of the software I found from Linux, I still use on uh, Windows or Mac OS anyway. I try to find software that uh, can be used across all those platforms. So whatever I'm using, I'm using the same software. Hopefully you found this useful or informative. If you have any questions about anything I talked about, leave those down in the comment section. If there's specific tests that you want me to do on these machines in Linux, let me know those too. And if you want much more detailed Linux information and those install tutorials, make sure you check out that Linux channel. If you like these kinds of videos, hit that thumbs up. If you really like them, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when I put up more and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for stopping by.